Hey, what's going on everybody? 110 gallon tank's been set up for six months now. I have not done a water change on this tank. Uh, I just wanted to share with you how I'm doing things, how I'm running it, uh, what's working, why I think they're working, and what I plan to do going into the future with this tank. So this is what the tank looks like right now. Uh, I put a picture up so you can compare to what it looked like six months ago when I first started. Uh, everything seems to be doing really well right now. I have some of this uh, red cyan or something on the sand bed. I think that's maybe uh, I need to change my RODI filters. And I done that a couple of days ago. So uh, that's the only thing I can figure. Nitrate and phosphate both test low. Uh, Nitrate less than two, phosphate is usually in the point zero range. You know, I figure anything less than point one is, is great as long as it's above zero. But, uh, you know, no water changes. Uh, all I'm doing is topping off. I am dosing uh, these Red Sea coral colors, uh, trace elements. I don't dose them as, probably as much as I do, but I don't test for them. I don't have the test kits for that, so I'd rather be a little low and a little high. Uh, I should do a tight kit, you know, ICP test, but you know things are going smooth, so I really don't think I, I want to at this time. Uh, my filtration is still the same. Uh, simple setup, still using the Reef Octobus 200 Classic, still working. I just cleaned it yesterday, so it doesn't have a whole lot collected. Uh, my refugium, uh, I had a little piece of chato when I started in here, and now we got a lot. Uh, it's two big parts of it. Uh, have some hair algae down here with these frags, or some more chato. Uh, it's growing really well. The hair algae is going good down there too. So anyway, I, that seems to be keeping my my nutrients down uh, just to go through the tank see how things are looking that torch is just getting too big it's uh, mounted on a, like a one inch square disc and uh, it's just too heavy it keeps falling over I don't I keep pushing sand around it but uh, I need to frag that and do something with those the rest of euphilia still still growing big this section's changed just a little bit, but you can see the, the PC rainbow still encrusting. Uh, I'm thinking about trying to hit it with a razor blade or something to try to promote some growth on it. I'm not sure. Bird of Paradise is getting really big. There's a piece there and a piece there that's broke off from it. It's growing. That red digi is doing really well. I fragged it a couple times and it's still big. Uh, all these easy SPS up here, the Pacillopore, Bird's Nest, that green's, green bird's nest I've never really had good luck with and it's doing its thing now. So whatever I'm doing is working for it. That big bird's nest in the back, I, that thing is humongous. But all in all, everything is, hey, get out of here. Uh, everything's going good other than this little red on the sand bed hopefully changing the filters uh, just putting clean top off water in there should make a difference uh, this coil right here that that I got from Eric it's still not really focused like I want it to but it's, it's showing some really good potential but that's what I'm doing uh, no water changes top off clean water uh, using BRS two-part uh, calcium alkalinity BRS dosing pumps I'm really thinking hard pretty much already made my mind up I'm gonna get a calcium reactor uh, if anybody has some input on that how are you you using yours uh, I found a Premium Aquatics has a killer deal, 700 bucks for a complete setup with everything included, the CO2 tank, uh, Milwaukee monitor, which I wouldn't need. I'm gonna run it off my Apex, but everything included for a Geo's reactor. Uh, the only thing is it's a Reef Fanatic uh, 
regulator. And I'm not real sure about that. You know, most of the people online recommend that you get a carbon doser and uh, the digital regulator, and it's a whole lot more money. You can get a, you know, just a needle wheel uh, regulator for a little over a hundred bucks. That carbon doser is about 350. Uh, I, I think that is the way to go. I just hate spending that much money. Uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a tightwad with my money, honestly. I, I, I just hate spending money like that. Which something is much cheaper that should be able to get the same thing accomplished. Uh, the other thing is uh, the feed pump. Uh, that kit comes with a maxi jet. I don't care for a maxi jet at all. If I'm going to use a, a small feed pump like that, I'd get a small CJ, like a .5 or a, a 1.0, uh, 50 bucks. I, I just think that's a much higher quality than the maxi jets. Uh, but the Kimura uh, peristaltic pump uh, seems to be the way to go. You can dial in your speed on that Kimura and that's all you have to do to adjust your dosage. And uh, you know, 50 bucks for a, a CJ pump or, or less for a maxi jet when it's 250 for the Kimura. Uh, man, I just hate that kind of price difference, but it seems to be that the the carbon doser and the Kimura are what I'm going to have to go with. It's it's, a, it's just the proven thing right now to make things simple and easy. So that's probably what I'm going to do. Just bite the bullet, go ahead and spend the money and get it over with. Uh, but, you know, like I say, the, the large skimmer, the you know, decent size refugium, and dosing those trace elements is working. Uh, at some point, you know, it may be that nitrate and phosphate and other other nutrients become too high that I need to, to start doing water changes. But right now, I don't want to mess with it. Things just seem to be working for me, and I want to continue doing it. You know, the calcium reactor, I hate to, to, to spend that kind of money and change from two-part that's obviously working. But... It's just, I don't know. It seems simple, and, and it's not really the cost that's bothering me with the two part, it's filling the, the bottles. Just constantly having to check and make sure there's no air in the lines. Uh, make sure that my containers are full. With a calcium reactor, you're only gonna have to fill the reactor, you know, two or three times a year at most. You kind of just set it, check your alkalinity as long as everything's in line. It's kind of set and forget, and, and it's continuously dosing calcium and alkalinity throughout the day where right now I'm dosing my calcium and alkalinity at night uh, especially the alkalinity trying to bring the pH up at night so there's not such a big drop off at night uh, and I, I think the stability of a calcium reactor where it's constantly giving a source of calcium and alkalinity would, would enhance things even better than what they are so that's what I'm looking at going into the future uh, six months is not bad for you know like I say most of this rock come from my tank the the newer rock I did cycle so it's not like any of this was just straight base rock coming into it um, and I think that's the biggest difference you know if you, you start a new tank with just base rock you're gonna have to go through all the ugly stages you are more than likely gonna have to do water changes uh, to get rid of the you know your brown and green algaes uh, your hair algae is going to come as that rock establishes itself and i didn't have any of those problems with this tank so uh, that said i might do a water change here shortly just to replenish the trace elements uh, just i don't know it seems like you just should be doing them and and i hate to mess with things that are working so Anyway, that's a that's six months no water changes. Uh, everything's running smooth. Uh, I will continue to up you update you guys and let you know if I continue with this regiment that I plan to do and how things work out. So thanks for watching, guys.